Hi, this is Siobhan Hunter. Hi, this is Chris Gaunt. Hi, this is Cliff Pike from Hibs TV. Hi, this is Tom McManus. And you're listening. And you're listening to. And you're listening to. And you're listening to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. The Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Listening to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. To Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Go on, the lads. What a moment this is. It's Liam Henderson to deliver. Strong opinion. I love the strong opinion. Hello and welcome back to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. As always, I am Jack. Unfortunately, Calvin and Aidan couldn't join us, um, but I am joined by Charlie. How are you, Charlie? I'm good, mate. I, um, it's nice to be talking about Hibs women again after uh, a good uh, cup win on Sunday. And obviously looking forward to another cup win next Sunday. So, aye, I'm doing good, yeah. mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm very, very well, thanks. Of course, another 1-1 one, one win against Hearts at Easter Road. Although, um, this time we got a trophy out of it. So, yeah, um, of course, guys, the big thing, and that's what we're going to start off um, this little Hibs on episode about, is we're going to give our quick thoughts on the Edinburgh Derby. Of course, another record crowd. The record was smashed um, at Easter Road. Just over 8,000 fans came along to cheer on the girls, which I think is really, really great to see. And it was an exciting derby against Hearts to say the least. And of course, we won the Women's Capital Cup on penalties, inaugural Women's Capital Cup on penalties as well. So we're going to be quick with this because we're going to be doing our women's tier maker. Um, but Charlie, what are your quick thoughts on the game? What did you think of the derby? Listen, it's evident to see how the progression the Hearts have made, first of all. Um, they they were good on Sunday. Uh, so are we. I thought we were good as well. Um, but First and foremost, Eva Odds done a class job there. You can see the style of football she wants to play. That she wants to make them hard to beat. They've conceded the least amount of goals outside the Glasgow lot. I think you told me on Sunday, or maybe it's yeah, just they've got the best defence in the league outside of. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, they're listen. They're playing well, but um, less less said about them, the better. So I I thought Hibs are good. Um, I thought the team selection was a bit weird, but ultimately you want players in there that have played in derbies before. Um, but it was a good game of football, mate. I enjoyed the day out, um, and it was obviously nice to to see us lift the Capital Cup. Um, nice to get a photo with it as well. And I good to see that I'm in the, that crowd there as well. Obviously, you were, I wasn't expecting the full thirteen thousand to show up. Um, but I thought it was a good day out, mate. Good, good, um, good noise from both sets of fans as well. You know, it was nice to hear when both teams score a, a roar. You know, as well, it's that's good in women's football. You want to see that. Um, so a very positive day out, mate. Um, aye, it would have been a lot worse if we'd got beat. So, aye, it was good. Yeah, I've got to agree. First of all, um, talking about the crowd, it was excellent. I think that's that's the best atmosphere I've seen in a Scottish women's football game outside the national team. Um, I think there's always a good buzz around the national team games because the tar, you know what the Tartan Army are like. Um, but for me, at a club level, that's the best atmosphere I've seen. It was great to see the Gorgi Ultras and Block 7 be there um, and make noise for the team. Um, which is really, really good. Um, I, I think we, we need more of that moment's football. Um, I know Celtic um, and Rangers, their active support, are getting more involved. Um, Motherwell, are, were, some of them were there for the Lanarkshire Derby, so against Hamilton. So I, it is really, really good to see. And it was great to see at the end, Joe, loads of young girls and um, other fans uh, get photos of players and get to see the cup. And I, I think that's a big thing. Um, and I think it was really, really nice to see. And it was all around a good buzz around the game, which is what we want. I think that's what it's all about. First and foremost, I've got to agree with you. Not that I'm going to talk about um, Hearts too much, but I think Ava Olid has done a phenomenal job. You consider that Hearts team where they were last season compared to where they are now. It is very, very impressive what she's done. And I don't, you know, Hearts have funneled nowhere near the amount of money we have in it. You know, Hearts aren't even full-time professional. They're still sort of on the semi-professional, very much like we were last season. Um, Hearts are still very much in that transition phase and I think considering that, that they've done very very well I thought they looked very composed on the ball um, and caused us a lot of problems and I thought Parker Smith considering she's a good high B as well 
Uh, she she kept she kept them in the game at times. I thought she, from a heart's point of view, she was playing the match. Um, but for me, yeah, first and foremost, team selection. I've got to agree with you. It was a bit of an odd one. Uh, I would have liked to have seen Crystal and Tina play together because we seen when Crystal came on, she changed the game for the better. Um, but I'm not going to question it too much because I think. Uh, you know, Ailey is Ailey's a very competent player. And like you said, you want players with those experience. And Ailey obviously was hammer of the hearts last season, scored in all three derbies. So yeah, I think the team selection was a wee bit strange, but you know, I'm I'm not gonna complain about it. Overall, I think the draw the draw was a fair reflection of the game over the 90 minutes. Um I don't think either team could have come away and say they deserved to win it. Although I'd say towards the end we were the better team. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we could have we could have won it right at the death, but definitely. Um uh, but Crystal, that goal was, was fantastic. Was I mean, the awareness, the technique, um, the fact that she was brave. We've been saying that for a long, long time with Hibs. I mean, that we've got so many quality players, we just need to be shooting more and being a bit more brave for chances, and that what that's what Crystal did. Yeah, and Crystal's phenomenal as a player. So yeah, I was just really, really happy. And then of course, Capital Cup, Haaland steps up. Saves the penalty, um, and Siobhan sticks away the winner, um, and it just had to be Shiv. Sticks away the winner is an understatement, mate. She almost took the she almost took the net off. I know, it was brilliant. That was one of the best penalties I've ever seen. Um, and of course, we got a bit of silverware. Where the so called journalists that were moaning about it. <laughs> I mean, I've got to say, like, and I do agree with what Dean tweeted out after the game. We're meant to be growing women's football and supporting women's football criticising something that's a bit different that tries to innovate I think is not really I think to use a term that Calvin would have said if he's with us he would have said Shan Patter and I do agree with him there you know we're trying to grow the women's game we don't need that sort of negative press so I think I think the Capital Cup was a bit something a bit different remember both clubs and the league have needed to have sanctioned it so yeah I, I was an SFA would have needed to sanction it as well because the referees are on SFA time so uh, I think yeah to me, the penalty shootout just added something a bit extra to it because what ended a bit of a drab draw got that bit of drama at the end and we got the cup and it's a trophy to actually say we're the best women's team in Edinburgh. And let, the facts don't, you know, the facts don't like themselves. We are now unbeaten against Hearts in two years. So we're top dogs in the city. What can I say? Um, the girls deserve that. It was great to see a trophy. You know, you could see how much it meant to the Highbies in the squad, and you see how much it meant to players like Mickey and Benny. Benny was, I think, Benny was phenomenal in that game, uh, brick wall. So yeah, all in all, a great day out, and um, uh, the reason I'm one of the many reasons I'm proud to support Hibs women. So that was just our quick thoughts on the derby. But as you guys will know, and we've done a men's tier maker. Um, reviewing how players have got on so far this season. We are now going to be doing one for Hibs women as well. Um, basically, same rules apply, except we don't have a um, sell in January option. In this one, we have a frustrating option instead. Same rules apply. It's players that have had that have played competitive games this season. So, and... Ailey Tebbit does not feature. Yes, exactly, which is slightly unfortunate. But yeah, yeah Ailey Tebbit is not there but the rest of the squad are, and it's just basically the same process of me and Charlie slabbering all the shite um, <laughs> as per usual. So, Charlie, if you would kindly share your screen and we'll get the show on the road. I'll just get up. There we go. So, there we go. We've got it all, and we'll start off with the goalkeepers. We'll start off with Benedict Haaland. Um, you know what? I am actually going to put Benny in good. I feel very good. So I'm going to put Benny <laughs> as uh, as the other Haaland would say. Um, well, I think Benny's the best Haaland, also the best Norwegian at Hibs as well. Um, not the best Norwegian ever play for Hibs. There's a certain Scottish Cup 2016 winner that's uh, got true, to hold, that hold that title. But I think Benny's the second best Norwegian ever play for Hibs. Um, I think I like Benny. Very good shot stopper. She's better than Gabby English in that respect. I think She's got more to her game than Gabby had. Like Gabby, very good communicator, very good at commanding her box, and her distribution was good. Yeah. Benny, very good shot stopper. I mean, some of the wonder saves Benny's pulled off this season. Good penalty. She's good at saving penalties as well. She saved a few this season, which is what we needed. That was another thing that Gabby didn't really have in her locker. 
And all in all, I think Benny's just been a very, very good goalkeeper for us. The reason that, that prevents me from putting her in player of the year is the fact that she has had some mistakes, primarily from set pieces. But yep. apart from that, Benny's been excellent. I think the one game I'm going to pick out was the semi-final against Glasgow City because, you, you know, the amount of huge saves he made, that's what you need. That's when you need your goalkeeper to step up. And Benny stepped up. She was brave. There was a there was a save in particular from a um, Chinchilla, Priscilla Chinchilla chance that was just stunning. I mean, it wouldn't look out of place with Lev Yashin pulling off that save. You know, it was it was absolutely fantastic. So for me, Benny's got to go in the good. Um, I think it's just the fact that sometimes she's a bit shaky that prevents me from putting her in Player of the Year. But apart from that, I love Benny, excellent goalkeeper. I think one of the best goalkeepers I've seen in the Hibs shirt probably since Jenna Fife. So I definitely put Benny in there, excellent goalkeeper. Um, and a master stroke of a signing as well. Yeah, I agree. I think um, at the start of the season, I was a bit concerned, but I think she's definitely become accustomed to the league now. And I, I think she's a very good keeper. I think she'll be, she'll be. Um, wouldn't surprise me if teams are after her in the summer. Yeah, hundred percent. So then move on to our backup goalkeeper, Daniela Kasinska. Um, so Charlie, what are your thoughts on Daniela? <laughs> Uh, she's not played a lot of football, but she's not considered a goal mate, so it's, she's got it going good. Yeah, I would I've got say to from agree with that. the two, the two or three games she's played, looks good on, looks good at saving. Um, distribution looks all right. So I, I mean, it's hard when you know I, I've not seen her in the flesh. I've only seen highlights, but she's looked good from what I've seen. Yeah, hundred percent. I think for me with Daniela, um, obviously she was a sign that needed to be made. Because obviously, uh, Ailey Timmy got injured. And then young Hannah Marriott got a sports scholarship in America, so left. So obviously, she's the under 19 keeper and she'd been training with us. I think, had Hannah have stayed, we wouldn't have signed Daniela. Because um, yeah. I think Hannah probably would have been given more opportunities. Having said that, I think Daniela, yeah, she's played twice and kept two clean sheets. So you, you can't complain. That's what you want. I think your backup goalkeeper is good. She's not been tested. Like Kamarnak, she didn't have anything to do she's against also, them. Aye, she's played against minnows of there. And in Glasgow the women, I think they test. She didn't have too much to do in that game, but against Glasgow women, she did look good, looked assured. Um, so yeah, all in all, I put Daniela in good. She's yeah. looked like a competent keeper anytime she's played. Oh, definitely. So yeah, I definitely put Daniela in good. So uh, the keepers are already. She's doing better than a, another um, keeper. Um, so yeah, yeah, considering we say we'd sell him, <laughs> she's doing she's doing better than she's doing better than a compatriot. Uh, anyway, so now talk about um, Shannon Leishman. I've got to eat some humble pie here, mate. Yeah, I think you do. I'd put Shannon Leishman in good. I would Shannon as well. Leishman, and if to be honest, if she'd be getting more game time, I put her in Player of the Year. Aye. Now, a certain Mr. Banks said some not very complimentary <laughs> things about Shannon in our listen, season preview. Listen, you've got to bear in mind that I didn't watch Hibs women every week like I do this season, last season. So I just thought that maybe she wasn't going to get a run in the team. And when she did, she wasn't going to play well. But she's played class every time I've seen her. So, aye, she's in the good. Yeah, I definitely put Shannon in good as well. She's she's a brilliant player, Shannon Leishman. Again, she's a she's a hubby. You know, if anybody knows... the. Leishman family, um, you know that they're all big high bees. And Shannon, she's been through the player pathway. She knows what it means to play for this club. She's a very solid player and one that I think we're very lucky to have as well. She's Aye. she's obviously playing in the backup a bit just now. But any time that we've needed her, she's come on, she's done her job. And she's one of these players that you'll get a solid 8, 9 out of 10 performance out of her every week. Um, yep. And a very good player to have around the club. So, yeah. For me, Shannon definitely goes in the good. Yep. And like I said, you've got humble pie out the oven I do. of shame. I do, and I've already eaten it, mate. Yep, out the oven of shame, it gas my egg on your face. Um, so, yeah, definitely one that you had to apologise for there. Um, just for that, I think we should get your top with Leishman to pull on the back. <laughs> just, just to really get it up you there. Um, but, yeah, Shannon's been brilliant. So, then move on to Lucy Parry. And I know where Lucy's going, but Charlie, I'll let you um, give your thoughts on Lucy first. Ah, uh, she's she's up there, player of the year already. Like, yeah, she is. Um, she is unbelievable. She, mate, it, 
Callum or Liz Dad put in our group chat the other day that if um, if she played for Liverpool, she would be in the first team. And I completely agree. Like if she was down there this season, well, next season she'll be in the first team at one of the big team big teams in England. I think she's just she's just very confident on the ball. She scored for us as well. Um, I she was player of the match on Sunday against the Hearts. So very very good player, mate. I'm glad I'm glad she plays for us and not against us. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think. When she came in on loan for Liverpool, I knew we were getting a good player because Liverpool are just they're growing right now. And I think if Liverpool women get relegated, she'll end up in the first team. She's yeah. very capable of playing in the championship in England I, and even in the WSL. You look at you could easily fit her into a mid table WSL team, no problem. And yeah. um, right now she's a phenomenal player. The way she takes players on, the her speed, her brave she's very, very brave on the ball. She's just got everything you want in a player and really exciting to watch. And also, she's captain in England's under-19s. And if you look at what England are doing, European champions, big pathway there. Um, and Serena Wiegmann has said she wants to use the pathway more. So, you know, you're looking at that. Lucy Parry is huge. Yeah. You know, huge talent. And a player we are very fortunate to have. Excellent. I think one of the most exciting players I've seen at Hibs at any level. Aye. very great player I, I, I love Lucy Ex- excellent for us and uh, I think you could go down and say she's maybe signing of the season as well I would say she's up there for sure yeah definitely you know, Lucy's fantastic um, and I think we'd be here all night if we were giving her um, all the praise that we could <laughs> give because she's just an excellent player and if you get player of the match against Tarts in which the, her performance against them was outstanding oh, it, was, it was deserved for sure yeah yeah. that's what if you get player of the match against Tarts especially when you're so young you deserve the credit that you're getting. So now we move on to, we call Louis Stevenson Mr. Hibbs. So here's Mrs. Hibbs herself, <laughs> Siobhan Hunter. And you know what? I'm putting Shiv, I'm putting Shiv in good. Um, you know, Aye. not quite player of the year, but Shiv, you're just getting what you, you, you Shiv's, you see what, you, you get what you see with Shiv. She loves, she loves the Hibs. Um, so passionate. Your solid, dependable centre half. But I like Paul Hanlon in that respect, that she's always she's always there. She's always dependable. She gives us um, what we need. She's not afraid to uh, speak her mind either on the pitch, which is what I like to see. You're not wrong there. She's not afraid to uh, she's not afraid to take people to the cleaners either, as well with some of the tackles that she puts in. But that's what you want. And everything about Shiv just oozes hibs. And that's what you love a player like that. You love a player that I'll kiss the badge. You love a player that will knee slide um, when they score against Tarts. You love a player that every waking moment for her is all about Hibs and all about how she can improve and how she can do things to the club. And that's it. And that's why she was my favourite player. She's everything about her is what Hibs class is. And that is why I'm I, I just I can't say I can't say anything more about Shiv. She's just she's just Hibs AF, mate. It's as simple as that. Um, and she's one of the best centre halves in the league. I agree, I've seen uh, my brother Matty tweeted after the um, derby that how does she not in the Scotland team? I agree. There's a, there, is a, I, there is a place in that Scotland squad for Shiv. I'm going to be honest, and I, and I know a few people may maybe disagree, but I think, why not? Shiv could easily play for Scotland. She, she easily could. Honestly, I think she's one of the best defenders in the country. She's, she's fantastic. And um, like I said, not quite player of the year. Um, but definitely a good player and one that uh, is hips through and through. Um, we're just, yeah, we're, we're going to get many more years out of her. She's definitely a one club woman as well. Um, and I can't really say any more about Shiv, if I'm being honest. I, I agree. Can't, can't add anything to that. I can't add anything to that. Got a bit passionate there, if I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, a real bit emotional as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll now move on to Ellis Notley, who was. Last season's player of the year. I think there's a and, player. Uh, of, I think there's a player of the year. Curse me, to be honest. So Charlie, what are you what are you think about Ellis? I don't think she's been that great this season, to be honest. Uh, she's like she's dependable. I think in her position though, like playing defender, centre mid. I think there's better players in her position. But she like she's a good servant to the club. Like 150 games uh, for Hibs. That's that's no small feat, especially when you look at who's had that in the men's game, like, that's no small feat. She joins a, a long list of players that played over 100 times for Hibs. So, I think it's been an average season for 
Ellis, I don't think it's been a good one, but it's not been, it's certainly not been a bad one. Put it that way. I think it's middle of the road. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I think I'm going to stick Ellis in average as well. Uh, I think for me, very, she's a good player. I just think in certain games she's looked a, quite a wee bit off the pace. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes she doesn't suit that CDM role that she seems to get played yeah. in a lot. I definitely think she's she is more an out. She's an out and out centre half. I think yeah. Leah Eddie suits the CDM role. Don't get me wrong. I think Leah, so. I. Leah's a lot better in that role than Ellis is. Ellis is a brilliant player, and again, 150 um, appearances. She's she is an excellent servant to the club. Just for me, she's not the player she was last season. No. Um, but she's still, for me, middle of the road. And I, I do like Ellis as a player. I just think it's some certain performances this season just haven't been great. And I think that's why you've just got to stick it in average. Yeah. So we'll now move on to uh, Captain Fantastic. And we talk about veterans of the game. Hi. Joel, I mean, it's just excellent to see that Joel's still with us. Because again, like Siobhan, another high B that just gets what it means to play for the club and would do anything for Hibs. Bleeds yeah. green. So for me, I've got to put Joel in good. I, I think despite her age, she's been, again, dependable. I mean, you look at her, 30, 35, you're, you go, most players, that's when they begin winding down. Yeah. That's when they begin... For me, I, I'm not seeing... You've seen a few, maybe maybe in terms of pace. Yeah. But I think for me, apart from that, Joel's still... That centre-half pairing of Joel and Shiv has it, stood the test of time. Because considering when Shiv came into the first team, and you get Joel... It, you know, Joel came into the first team when she's 15, 16. She has been playing first-team football for Hibs for 20 years. I mean, that's phenomenal. You, you, you can't you, you can't ignore that you know that is rare in modern football that you get a player that's been at a club for that long Yeah. and think about how decorated she is as well and Joelle deserves that arm band she's still very much got a place in the team she's been brilliant this season I think solid and yeah she's maybe made a few mistakes here and there but when you have an older player you just expect that to happen and I know I said Joel would be the disappointment of the season as well. She's uh, proved me wrong, and I'm, 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 I love that. And also, Joel's a great ambassador for the club. She's been excellent in her coaching role as well. So this is the sort of first full season that she's been in within. Within that rematch, she's been a great support to Dean, and she's been excellent at motivating the girls when she's not been playing, or she's maybe been on the bench when she's on the sideline. She's got her coaching hat on, and she's been fantastic in that sort of. Um, role as a player coach as well so for me Joel's got to be good she's done what she needed to do this season and again a bit like Siobhan she's just your solid dependable centre half she is indeed I think this will be our last season like I think she'll probably move more f- primarily focusing on the coaching role next season but I mean she might prove me wrong she might play another one but aye she's had a good season I don't think she's had many mistakes this season maybe the maybe the 9 not at Celtic but you forget, you for you for, forgive and forget that one when you look at how the far we've exactly. how far we've come since then. So, I yeah. I think good season so far, albeit these are just up until now. So, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of room for that to change. But I, I definitely think the thing with Joel as well is I definitely think she'll go down what what sort of what Leanne Crichton done with Motherwell, which is yeah. she goes she has one more season and then fully into the coaching team. Although there's no stopping Joel. No, I think, I think she could play until she's forty easily. Oh, yeah. Well, I think even past that, I think it's just a case of when Joel decides she's going to stop. Yeah. And you had the same, we had, we had, you had the same sort of case with Laura Kennedy where the, yeah. the, the club basically had to force her to retire. And you look at her, I mean, even in the Hanlon Stevenson Foundation game, Laura, <laughs> you know, there was no stopping Laura Kennedy either. She was still sore from it when she brought the match ball out against Hearts. Aye. Which, fair play to her. So, yeah. Um, I want to move on to Leah Eddy. Um, Charlie, you're up for this one. Uh, what do you think? What do you think of Leah so far this season? I'd probably put her in the good category. I don't think she's been player of the year contender, but she's she's as solid as ever, mate. She is one of my favourite Hibs women's players. Um, I think she just is a class football player. I think you know what you're going to get when you see Leah Eddie. She's not. She doesn't pull any punches, or she never has two performances that are are different. She you know you get the same every week. And um, she's a great player to have at the club. I think 
She's played, is it 50 games or 100 games? One of the two against Rangers. I think it's 50. Yeah. Like, that's that's solid numbers so far. Um, I'd like to see her get the 150 like Ellis. Um, but I, I think she's had a good season so far, mate. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, Leah goes in the good for me. Again, very dependable. That's why she's getting into the Scotland squad regularly. Although, Pedro, I'd like to see her get more game time. I know, so come on. Simple as that. <laughs> she deserves it. Especially, I think, I was gutted that she didn't get more game time against, you know, come on, it's the, it's the Faroe Islands. It was a meaningless game. We already knew we'd got the playoff spot. Yeah. You, you could have you could have played her in that game just to give her that like experience, especially in a competitive yeah. qualifying match as well. Um, so I think for me, Leah's just been fantastic. Solid 8 out of 10 every week um, in terms of performances. You, like you said, you know what she's going to get. But she's always consistent. Yeah. And she is one of my favourite players as well because she, she's, she's excellent. And considering, and I think I've said this so many times before about Leah, but it, it is a drum I'm going to continue to bang, that she has come through so much. At the start of the COVID season, that injury, you know, I genuinely thought that was her done. I thought it's a shame we've signed a good young player here and she's got injured and that's it. Um, but she bounced back from that, picked up player of the year in what was a difficult season. And since then, she's just been going from strength to strength. So Leah's amazing and it's brilliant to see her continue um, to build on that um, and continue to be a, a dependable servant for the club as well. So we'll now move on to Poppy Lawson, who was another new signing. Um, obviously came in from Manchester United Women's Reserve Team, where she'd been the captain and had won some trophies down there. And you know what? It's a shame for Poppy, but I'm actually going to go and put her in frustrating. Not that she's been frustrating, it's frustrating that she's just not been given the opportunities. Uh, she's she's um she's looked good when she's played me, but I think it's frustrating because she should play more. I think. Yeah, she needs to play more. Like if you look at her age as well, you know she needs. She's to very, play. she's very young, which is yeah. which, which is good. Like that's what you want. You want players coming in that have got a few years, a wee bit of experience in them, but also a lot of years to learn as well. Yeah, I think that's it for me, Poppy. If you look at the fact that. You know, I'd say the only foot she's put wrong when she's played was the, the sort of pressure that corner that she gave away against Spartans that led to them yeah. scoring. I think that's the only foot she's put wrong. Apart from that, I think she's looked really good when she's played. It's just the issue is she needs the game time, and that's it. When a young player like her, it needs to be going from strength to strength. I think that's the issue of we gave Jenna Penman, who's in a similar position, I think, to Poppy. We gave Jenna Penman more chances last season than what Poppy's yeah. got so far this season. Which, if I'm being honest, if you compare the two, they are very similar players. And if I'm being honest, I think Poppy's maybe slightly better than Jenna. I think I think so. They're both very similar to each other. And I, and I do like Jenna as a player, um, even though she went to the maroon side of town. But I think Poppy needs to be given the opportunity so she can develop and grow yeah. as a player. Um, and then that way, I think you're going to be seeing a star on your, on your hands. The reason she just doesn't get the sort of attention that maybe Paz gets is because she never got any first team opportunities at Man U. Yeah. Lucy was sort of in and around the Liverpool first team and was beginning to get chances. Poppy never really got that. Although a lot of Man United fans were very annoyed that she got Aye, I seen that on Twitter leave. and Instagram when she moved up they were they were uh, disappointed to see her leave, which is a good sign. Which is a good sign. I just think if Poppy gets more opportunities and I think we'll see it as the season progresses, she gets more opportunities and she gets more of a chance to prove herself, then I definitely think we'll see her grow as a player. Yep. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that, but right now it's got to be a frustrating Aye. because we've just not seen enough of her. So we'll now move on to um, another another one of the new players, Rihanna Hines. Another frustrating one, I would say. Not yeah. because of her ability, but it was frustrating because she got injured when she was really coming onto a game. Yeah. And the Spartans I, game, and then hasn't he really played much since. Yeah, but I've got to agree. I think that's horrible what happened to the injury because one of them she, was one of them was coming off injured, but it's just a shame it was Liana. It's just it's one of those tackles where you know somebody's going to come out badly from it. It's just a shame that it, it went Liana's yeah. way. Um, I think she's been she's looked decent when she's played, um, but for me it's frustrating because it's just such a shame that she got injured and she's coming on the game. I mean, there was that wonder goal against Spartans, Aye. um, which was it was whether she meant it or not, it's another story, but it was an excellent goal. Was. But I think, again, you look at the level of players she is, she's had experience in other leagues. She's captain Trinidad and Tobago. So, yeah, Liana is a good player. 
and I think she's going to have so much more to offer. We just need her to get fit, and then we'll yep. see more of her in the team. Because I think she looked very leggy against her. You can tell she's still recovering. Aye. And she's maybe been shoehorned, a bit like with Rocky, I think she's maybe been shoehorned in there a bit. Yep. Uh, so hopefully she gets a little bit of time to recover more, and I think we've got a player on our hands there um, when she does get up to full fitness. So what I move on to the uh, Pilton Purlow, uh, Mickey Macalone. <laughs> The Pilton, I think that's a good one, the Pilton Purlow. Um I think Mickey's got to go and play of the year for me. Aye, I agree. There's, there's nowhere else she was going. Been, She's been, uh, world class this, been world class this season. And I was speaking to Mickey's dad a few times um, at games and I agree how the girl's not in the Scotland squad is beyond me. She's fan, yeah. she's phenomenal. It's, it, it, she she can be anywhere. Uh, she, she goes anywhere in the pitch and she'd run through a brick wall for, to, to get a chance you know she's always creating chances shutting down opposition playing in the midfield Mickey's just an all rounder she can do anything and yep. she is fantastic for us like fantastic I've said it so many times before but we are fortunate to have her oh, it's very I... easy that she could have left Spartans and went to a Rangers or a Celtic or down south but she came to us and she's been phenomenal easily one of our best players definitely um, and she's definitely up there as one of the players of the year um, she's definitely a player of the year contender because she's been amazing this 100%. season. Um, and yeah, just one of those players that's a joy to watch. 100% me. I think um, wouldn't it surprise me if she gets a big move in the summer as well? Like, yeah. It's, it's potentially on the cards. Um, obviously not heard anything, but I wouldn't it surprise me if she ends up down south or yeah. Celtic or Rangers or one of those bigger teams. I definitely see her ending up. In, I could definitely see her ending up in England. There's a yeah. there's a few mid table WSL teams that definitely would snap her up and she'd play regularly. Yo, know, because I'd like to see. Her, I'd actually like to see her link up with HL Corsi at Aston Villa. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be a, that'd be a, that'd be an interesting one to see, or even you know, even even somebody like a Birmingham or something like that. Yeah. You know, in the in, in the championship, a top championship club that you know will get WSL football next season. Yeah. Um, somebody like them. Because I think Mickey has definitely got the ability, and I just really hope that one day that Scotland call-up does come along because she does deserve it. She She's does, she does. Phenomenal player. So now we move on to Shannon McGregor. And uh, Charlie, on you go. I'd put Shannon in player of the year, mate. I think um, I think she's had a really good season so far. Um, she has obviously last season come back from that big injury. And I was a bit nervous going into the season that maybe she would sort of ease back a bit to potentially not try and aggravate it again, but she's kicked on big time, mate. She is um she is quality. I really like Shannon McGregor. Um and I would definitely say she based on the early season signs, definitely a player of the year contender. Yep, hundred percent. I'm gonna put Shannon in there as well. Again, it's something that I say a lot, but I'm gonna say it again, she just has that football brain. Yeah. She is she's excellent. And another one that should be in the Scotland squad as well. And we're not just saying this because we're, we're Hibs fans and that we've got the green tinted specs. Seriously, you know, Shannon is a phenomenal football player. One of the best midfielders I've watched, like, live. And oh, it's, she's definitely, I would say, in the top maybe five midfielders in the league. Yeah, she's she's excellent. She's an excellent footballer. And again, another player that gets what it means. She, she's, yeah. she, she knows what it means to play for Hibs and yeah, Shannon's fantastic and she's really come back from that injury and she's, I think she's even got a little bit better, if I'm being honest. Um, she's just an excellent footballer, Shannon McGregor. And, you know, you couldn't meet a nicer person either. She's she's a really she's really good with the fans and um, she does a lot of good work um, yeah. outside of the pitch as well. Um, but yeah, Shannon's fantastic and a, another player that um, does a lot of good work for us um, both on and off the pitch. Yep. So then we move on to young Rosie Livingston, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put Rosie in good. I'm gonna put Rosie in good here because, yes, yeah, she's not had too much game time this season, but you have got to bear in mind she is very very young. And being honest, you don't see that at any level of the game very often when a player as young as Rosie is getting the first team opportunities that she is. It's very uncommon for that to happen. You've got to bear in mind that even Messi wasn't that young when he started getting first-team football. So, you know, all I'm saying is, Messi, Ronaldo, watch out, Rosie Livingston's coming <laughs> for the both of you. 
because the girl's got a huge future. She, I think so. She is a very, very good footballer. Very direct, very fast, brave as well. I mean, when she came on against Rangers, the way she got stuck in a boot, Nicola Doherty, who's twice her age and his cap for Scotland is as the Rangers captain, you know, the girl has no fear. Yeah, She's an excellent footballer. And when she's played this season, she's been really, really good. Scored a few goals as well. And all in all, I think the more Rosie plays, the more she'll improve. And 10, 12 years down the line, this, that I can guarantee you Rosie will be leading the line for a top team. I could see her maybe going down the Aaron Cuthbert route. She'll be leading the line for Scotland and she'll be leading the line for a big WSL or Frown Bundesliga or La Liga club. Because I definitely think that girl's going to be a superstar in the future. She's a fantastic player and she's been excellent any time I've seen her this season. I couldn't, couldn't disagree there. I think the, the goals she's scored this season have been good as well. Important goals. Yeah. Um, aye, she's a good player. So, now move on to Eva Koiken and hmm, I'm not sure about Eva. She's it's been... been it's been frustrating, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd say frustrating again because she picked up a bad injury. Um, I, I think it, all the ones in frustrating have been either injured or just have they had game time. She's had the game time. Like Ava's, Ava's looked brilliant when she's played, but I've just not seen enough of her to make a proper judgment. Yeah. And then she's, she's just been really, really unlucky with that injury as well. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've really got to say about Ava. She does look like a good footballer. Hopefully we see more of her. Hopefully... Um, we can see her develop again. Like I feel like I'm a broken record because I've said this about Leanne and Paul as well, but <laughs> it is true. And again, she's just been so unlucky with injuries and the fact that she's been sort of limited to the opportunity she's had. Yeah. I so, it's no it's not really like the three I think the three of them came in with a lot of promise and I think um they've not really had game time yet. Like Mass is a game time, like Leanna's probably had the most out of the three of them. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say so, yeah. Aye. Anyway, on to Eleni. On to Eleni Giannou, the first of our Cypriots, and uh, certainly better than Alexandros Gogic anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Eleni, for me, goes in good. I Now, I suppose an argument could be made for average because she's not actually had that much game time. And it took her a wee while to get up and running, but I think she goes into good because now that she's hit her game, Eleni has been fantastic against Partick Thistle. I think she ran the equivalent of the Edinburgh Marathon, the Glasgow and Edinburgh Marathon combined in that game. She, the amount of running she did is really impressive. She's very direct. She's aggressive as well. Um, she's not afraid to get stuck in there. And I think Eleni came in and when we signed Eleni, thought okay, she played at a decent level of PA, okay, but most of her football's been in Cyprus. I don't know what to expect. She's been good. I, I, I like Eleni. Obviously, she was player of the match against Partick, which was yep. deserved. Um, she played in the semi-final against Glasgow City. She was excellent. And I mean excellent. Yeah. She she was a nuisance to Glasgow City that whole game. Um, causing that Glasgow City back line a lot of issues. So for me, I definitely say Eleni goes in the good because... I, I would agree. She is a good footballer. And I think the more she plays, the yeah. more we're going to see from her. Yeah. I agree. So we'll now move on to Ailey Adams and Charlie, I'll give you the first take on Ailey. This is a hard one for me, mate, because I think Ailey had a better season last season. I'm not really sure where to put her. I think it'd be unfair to put her in for Australian, obviously. Is it an average season on Ailey's standards? Probably. See, yeah, that's that, this, this is a very difficult one because I think Ailey... She keeps improving, and you got to remember. She, Aye, she, she is. She's, she's only eighteen. You got to still keep got that remember. She's, she's still young. She's Aye. still young. Um, but yeah, I think where she was at this point last season compared to yeah. where she is now, by her standards, by Ailey's standards, it is average. Yeah, and that's what you've got to remember. We're not marking her down. We're not criticizing her. We're just saying comparing her against herself. Yeah, she's been. Yeah, average. I think I definitely she's still been decent, but she scored. Think, she scored a few. Yeah, I just don't think that by her standards it's been a good. I actually think Rosie's actually. I think Rosie's actually been marginally better than other season as it's, well. If I'm being it's honest, def, definitely harder now for Ailey because you've got Crystal, Crystal and you've Christina, got Christina, 
Rosie's beginning to get Rosie's more opportunities. Rosie's getting more opportunities. Aye, I think, I think on the first, I think, do you, 12 games, maybe more than that. Aye, it's 12. No, 11 now we've played Hearts. Yeah. Uh, it's been average, but it's obviously still early doors in the season. There's still time to improve, and I think Kayleigh will kick on. I think she'll score a few more and she'll be in the good category come the end of the season. 100%. I think Ailey, Ailey's going to continue to improve. Like you said, but she gets better every time she plays. Yeah. Um, and again, she's another, she's another one. I'm going to say what I said about Rosie. Just everything I said about Rosie for Ailey as well. In fact, you know what? There's a there's your future Scotland strike partnership. Livingston and Adams. I'm, I'm saying it now. Would not both, be against that. Both brilliant. Uh, it's, it's better than Cuthbert and Emsley. I'm going to be brutally honest here. <laughs> um, so, we'll now move on to Big Nor Brahimovic, uh, Nor Mustafa. This is a difficult one. I think Nor came in a lot of promise around Nor. Yeah. But I think it's I think, been I, think I, I think it's been average. I think yeah, she's, I listen, she's got she she's a useful player to have, a bit like Mikola in the men's team. She's a target target player. But the only difference is she's just not got the eye for goal, I think, Matt has, if I'm being she honest. She lacks a bit of composure. You've seen that against yeah. Rangers. I so mean, I, think, I think it's been average so far. Let's, let's took her goal, against, listen, listen, took her goal really well against Farrens. That was a brilliant goal. That's the, when, goals, that's when, the goals she scored in the Cup have been decent as well. But other than that, I think it's been a pretty average start to Hibs. That's like I said, that's where, that's where we coined Norbert Himovic from. Um, was against, <laughs> was, was, was because that goal against... Uh, Spartans, but yeah, I, I gotta agree with you. Good goals in the cup, excellent goal against Spartans. I just think the thing is, if you got if you're comparing it, uh, Mick, are you comparing it to a sort of player we had like that before? Yeah, um, I'd because I'd, I'd say very much, you know, in the past, you had Kirsten Riley, even going back further than that, was like Rhonda Jones, you, you know, those sort of big target players, she's not the best we've had. I just think she doesn't have that eye for goal. And that's the problem. She lacks a bit of composure in front of goal. I mean, let's be honest. There's only one way to describe what that miss against Rangers. It's called bojanging it. She yeah. bojanged it against Rangers. She also bojanged it against Glasgow City at Meadowbank as well. That is true. That is true. So I, I think the thing is, if Nora gets a bit of composure and she tones down the aggressiveness a bit because she's been booked a few times as well, Aye, she has. I think she goes into the good. But I think the thing is for Nor. There's certain games that suit her, and there's certain games that not that don't suit her, and that's what's always going to happen when you have a player like that. Yeah. So yeah, I think for me, Nor's got to go in average. I've got to agree there. Um, average from Nor. Uh, now move on to I think the best Cypriot to ever play for Hibs, um, and she's not even a real Cypriot because uh, <laughs> if you're not guessing already, that accent does not come from the Casilla. Um, and that is Christina Freda, player of the year. Listen, there's Simple only one, there's only one place that was going. Simple. And actually, that. can we just skip ahead and put Crystal there as well? Because yeah, we'll put, we'll, in fact, we'll, we'll, do, we'll just do it for Crystal. We'll, we'll there's do Crystal only, and there's only, together. there's only one place they were going. They've both, yeah. like, both of them have been signings of the season contenders, along oh, with yeah, Paz. 100%. Like, the two of them are just unbelievable football players. See, Christina, direct. Yeah. And uh, like the way she absolutely mugged off the Glasgow City defence in that yeah, cup semi final. Calvin, Calvin might be right about these 100 goals by the way because she's sure battering them in now she, exactly and I thought, what I love about it is she had a lot of un- unfinished business here because obviously she had that loan spell with Glasgow City didn't work out she's come here and she's been phenomenal for us Like, listen she's got, been, she's got a cup to win as well exactly Tina's been amazing I think one of the one of the best strikers we've seen in the Hibs shirt like ever in Hibs running in I know, like, we, after Jamie Lee Napier left, we really struggled to find that goal scorer. Yeah. We tried with Carla Boyce, that didn't work out. We tried with Alexa, Alexa. that didn't really... <clears throat> Alexa was okay. Tina is amazing, like, phenomenal. And like Chris said, when we interviewed Chris, she's a menace. She's yep. a menace to any defence. Uh, she just gets herself about the pitch. And then Crystal, <laughs> I mean, she's got... To, She's got to be the best American ever pull on a shot. She definitely gets the club, which is refreshing yeah. to see a new signing and immediately click with the, both the fans and the players. Because she she's so like I've got to say with Crystal, like she exactly she gets what it means, and also like talk about it from a technical point of view. So if you compare it to Alexa, she's very much plays Alexa's role. 
Yeah. From last year was just sort of like a centre forward. Alexa, <laughs> tall, awkward, easy target for centre halves, missed a lot of big chances. Crystal, tricky. She's very tricky on the ball. Once she's in a flow, you're no touching her. Um, direct, fast, and she knows how to stick the chances away. And that's what I love. I love it. Like she'll she'll bolt up the wing, cut in, bang. There you go. That's what you want to see. And like you said, she gets it. She she absolutely gets it. She's connected with the fans really quickly, which is great to see. I think like Alexa, it took a little while for her to sort of get used to what Hibs are about as a club. Yeah. Um, Crystal's coming in and she's just straight away getting the club ethics. She's getting the club culture. And she's an excellent, excellent player. And if you look at her and Tina up front together, that is that is the strike partnership of dreams that is as simple oh, as that yeah. I mean it is lovely football it's as simple as that lovely football watching the two of them are linking up yeah. and they are like you said both of them are um, contest contestants for uh, sign of the season I think if you look at it I'd definitely say Christina's more of the goal machine yep Christina goes but Crystal Crystal's the one that's the creative influence um, I'd like to see the, the, the stats for Crystal's assists this season. She'll have a few in there herself as well. Um, Aye. And also, so, yeah, I definitely, Christi, Crystal and Christina are both amazing players. And when you consider what we had strikers-wise the last couple of seasons, yep. after Napier left, because Napier is, was a, a, big, a hole we've been struggling to fill um, since she left. And I think C- Christina and uh, Crystal alongside putting Ailey in there with them as well. There's definitely, we've, yep. we've got an impressive attack there, but both players are absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I just can't, I can't say enough positive things about them. Amazing. They're absolutely amazing players there, both of them. Aye, definitely. And last, but by no means least, we finish up with uh, Kirsty Morrison. Charlie? It's hard, mate, to... This might be hard for you to believe, but I don't think I've ever seen Kirsty Morrison play football. That's that's actually yeah. She doesn't I, get I, she. I think it's probably frustrating because she doesn't get the game time. And there's, probably, the, there's probably reasons for that. And I don't want to. I don't want to jump on the conspiracy theories or <clears throat> does Dean think she's good enough or whatever? But she just doesn't play. Yeah, and I, if there was a, a category for players, we probably should get rid of. Unfortunately, Kirsty probably falls into that because she just doesn't get the game time. Maybe she should do what Leah Threedy does and go on loan to Queen's Park or something like that. But yeah, she just, she just doesn't get the game time, so it's hard. It's probably I think the only place she can put her is frustrating. I think she she has played a competitive game. Obviously, she played against Kelly in the cup, but and she played against Glasgow Women the other week there. But I think she's actually scored this season as well. But like, she's not had a sniff in the league. Aye, frustrating. For, yeah, her, I've got for, her, for her sake. And mine, because I want to see her play football. I got to agree. I just think Kirsty's one of these players that I, I, I was shocked when obviously we had a lot of like when Rhea left, for example. Yeah. When Rhea McCaffrey left, I thought Kirsty's not far gonna be far behind. Her. Which it's is a shame. Just, I, I think, think I think she's got I think she's probably got a lot of promise. She, right, has got a lot of promise. she would uh, she does have a lot of promise or she wouldn't have been offered a contract. Let's be honest, like Dean is a good judge of talent. And yep. he, he sees a player there. And I think that's it. It's just Kirsty needs Kirsty needs the opportunities. And I'm gonna be honest, I think she's the sort of player that we will so say for example when the Scottish Cup comes along, we'll probably draw lower league teams in the earlier rounds. And I think you'll see more of her then. I think that's definitely especially the best game I've seen a player is when we uh, beat Gart Cairn twelve 0 Yeah. Um she got a lot more opportunities last season, but then we had problems with injuries and ah, yeah, that's kind of in. So that's why I just think you know now that she we've got more players and she's definitely went right down the pecking order. She's a decent enough player. I, I just think that in terms of personality and in terms of on the pitch, she is very quiet. Um, yeah. and that, that that's it. I think that's 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 Kirsty all around. But she is a very decent player. Um, and obviously she was part of the under twenty three team that Dean managed to in um, the leading cup double. So yeah. I definitely think you know Dean Dean. Um, Listen, Dean's a great eye for has a great eye for talent. Dean obviously wants to keep her around, and I definitely think she is worth keeping around. She is a good option to have, but at the same time, I think maybe a wee loan spell, like, like what 
you said about Leah Tweed, I think a wee loan spell and maybe like a Burham Your Thistle, like, yeah. like what we did with Ria last season actually as well. Um, a wee loan spell like a Burham Your Thistle or a club like that would probably do the world a good just so she's getting minutes in the legs and Aye. again, it's good for her own development as well. Yeah. Um, so on that note, that concludes our women's team tier maker, which is a hell of a lot more positive than the men's one. It's I true. think that's the conclusion it's we can true. draw there. There's a lot but, more. In, there's a lot more in the player of the year category. That's for sure. I think it's because the women's team are so impressive this season, and we're really beginning to come on to a game. So that was just our little derby review and our um, season so far tier maker, guys. As always, we hope you enjoyed it. It's a privilege for us to be the only Hibs podcast that regularly covers Hibs women. Um, genuinely a pleasure. Um, and remember, guys, you can get exclusive. Has women content with us, interviews, match reviews, and so much more. So do keep your eyes peeled. Until next time, glory, glory to the Ivies. Hi, this is Yvonne Hunter. Hi, this is Chris Gaunt. Hi, this is Cliff Pike from Hibs TV. Hi, this is Tom McManus. And you're listening. And you're listening to. And you're listening to. And you're listening to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. The Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Listening to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. To Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Go on, the lads. What a moment this is. It's Liam Henderson to deliver. Strong opinion. I love the strong opinion.